Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in Network Analysis and Synthesis. In this tutorial, we'll talk about the analysis of prototype low-pass filter. Please understand the numericals and the basic formulas for a constant K type low-pass filter has already been discussed in another video. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. But in this video, we'll focus on the derivation part of all the formulas that we used there. Uh, we'll find out the uh, derivation for cutoff frequency, the constant k, and, and the characteristic impedance in the first place. So, for a low pass filter of T section, in this video we'll talk about T section first. Uh, let us say we have a T section low pass filter or T type low pass filter. So, how do we find the characteristic impedance? of this low pass filter because in order to find the characteristic impedance we simply need to remember one key point here and that key point will make the things so easy for you and that key point is that the filters are symmetric devices and how can we make this device symmetric if we connect a load here let us say I've connected a load ZL here and this Z0 is the characteristic impedance. So this device being a symmetric device, it essentially uh, would mean that we'll need to keep this ZL to be equivalent to Z0. Only then this device will become symmetrical because Z1 by 2 and Z1 by 2 are uh, equal and Z2 is the balancing arm in the shunt. So, in order to make this device symmetrical in entirety, the characteristic impedance would come out to be equivalent to the load impedance. So, that's the key point here. So, filters are symmetric to board networks and therefore ZL must be equivalent to Z0. And Z0 is uh, something that we are striving to find out. So, or in other words, you would have seen ZOT in the books. Uh, because once we get to ZOT, once we find what is the characteristic impedance of this filter, we can easily put in the values of L and C in order to find uh, cutoff frequency and so on and so forth. But first things first, let's find out the value of uh, ZO or characteristic impedance or ZOT in particular for a T section. As you can see, this uh, s looking from this vantage point, let us say this is port 1, 1 dash. If we look from port 1 and 1 dash, we'll see that uh, Z1 by 2, this is in series with this arm, parallel this arm. So that is what I've written here. If you look from the port 1, you'll see that Z1 by 2 is in series with Z2 parallel this series arm. And this series arm has an impedance of Z1 by 2 plus ZL. So that's the first point of starting. So this is pretty elementary. You're simply calculating the total impedance as seen from port 1. In the next step, I've just um, uh, used the formula for parallel impedances so z dead uh, branch 1 into branch 2 upon branch 1 plus branch 2 so that's also very simple and in the next uh, step what i've done is i've taken the lcm the lcm becomes z2 plus z1 by 2 plus zl and this gets multiplied in the numerator part for uh, this thing and in the next step I've taken I've cross multiplied and the denominator goes to the left hand side now please understand after this point we will take up this issue that ZL needs to be put equivalent to Z0 so uh, we find a ZL here we find ZL here 
and we find a ZL here. So what we do is we put ZL to be equivalent to Z0 in the next step. So by doing so, this Z0, Z2 gets cancelled with Z0, Z2 here. Z1, Z0 by 2 gets cancelled with Z1, Z0 by 2 because we have substituted ZL as Z0. And finally, what we are left with uh, is Z0 square on this side and Z1, Z2 because there, there are two of them Z1, Z2 by 2, Z1, Z2 by 2, and then Z1 square by 4. And finally, uh, you get Z0, which is the characteristic impedance, to be equivalent to Z1, Z2 plus Z1 square by 4. And you see this formula uh, written everywhere in the books as the starting point of derivation of a prototype low pass filter. So that is how we get to this point. The only point that we need to consider was that the ZL should be equivalent to Z0. And that is how we can calculate the characteristic impedance because of the symmetry of these uh, devices. Filters are symmetric two port networks in the first place. So once we uh, find the value of Z0, we can go on to design our uh, low pass filter. Now we know the definition of a low pass filter and everything why inductor is uh, connected in the series arm, why capacitor is co connected in the shunt arm. Th that has already been discussed in uh, the previous videos. So we know that the series arm Z1 has a total um, impedance of J omega L because L1 by 2, L1 by 2. So this is known to us and the shunt arm has the total impedance 1 upon J omega C. Now we, we can compare this with the previous standard two port network uh, notations where Z1 is the sum of these two and Z2 is uh, the shunt arm. So having said that, uh, we know that our formula has Z1, Z2 and Z1 square upon 4. So what we do is uh, we calculate the values of Z1, Z2 and then we'll substitute these values here. So Z1, Z2 when calculated, this gets multiplied by this. So we get L upon C and the value of Z1 by 4, Z1 square by 4 comes out to be minus omega square L square upon 4 and when you substitute this and this into the characteristic equation characteristic impedance of the two port network which is a filter in this case you get Z or T to be equivalent to L by C minus omega square L square upon 4 and um, we take L by C common, so what we get, we, we get a 1 here and omega square LC upon 4. Now, <coughs> uh, this L upon C will always be a real quantity because L, L is some numerical value, C is some numerical value and we have an under root of that. So this will be some real quantity. And uh, this thing in the under root will be real only if omega square LC upon 4 is less than 1. If this quantity is lesser than 1, then the entire thing, the under root will be positive and it will be real. So we need to focus on condition number 1. Condition number 1 says that my Z O T, my characteristic impedance of the filter will be real only if omega square LC upon 4 is less than 1 and it will be imaginary when omega square LC upon 4 is greater than 1. Now offering a real uh, impedance means that 
the circuit would actually oppose the signal and offering an imaginary impedance is uh, the opposite of that and what will be the cut off frequency the cut off frequency will be uh, when uh, zot becomes uh, exactly equivalent to under root lc or this entire thing vanishes when the dependence on uh, this term goes away because this is the demarcation point of uh, demarcation point of when the filter will give you a real impedance versus when the filter will give you an imaginary impedance so uh, from here omega square lc upon 4 is equal to 1 uh, will is a condition of the cutoff frequency so what you can do is you can simply uh, find uh, substitute ome this omega as omega c and this lc goes here and you take under root of that and omega is 2 pi fc omega c is 2 pi fc so substituting omega c here you get fc to be equivalent to 1 upon pi under root lc which is the cutoff frequency of a low pass filter that we have already used in solving a few numericals in another video so th this is how we get this the rationale behind setting this frequency as the cutoff frequency is now clear because uh, this is the point where uh, the impedance shifts from being real to imaginary and on the contrary if you if you substitute or simplify uh, this thing zot so you get l upon c under root to be equivalent to r naught you can substitute this quantity which is going to be real anyways or this is our uh, good old k so very famously known as the constant k of a filter and this is from where we have gotten this formula a constant k type prototype filter has a constant k which is equivalent to under root l by c and it's also denoted as r naught at times and uh, simplifying this thing uh, if we substitute omega c square is equal to 4 upon lc we get 1 minus uh, omega square upon omega c square so uh, in other words this this formula again becomes very very important if if you've been given the frequency of operation for certain frequency let us say you have a frequency 2 hertz and your cutoff frequency is um, let us say 1 hertz then you can find impedance uh, of the low pass filter at 2 hertz frequency by substituting 2 hertz here 1 hertz here and of course 1 kilohertz uh, is more rational and by substituting the values of L and C you can find how much impedance is being offered by the low pass filter at certain frequency or you can check if this frequency lies above the range of uh, pass band then is it really you know offering you uh, offering you an impedance which uh, does the job for you or not so that is how you uh, calculate z o t r naught omega c and all those stuff so uh, uh, i hope this tutorial was of help and um, you've gotten to understand how to calculate the characteristic impedance of a two port network in in the next tutorial we'll talk about the two port uh, networks with pi sections and of course the key point remains the same that for filters the output impedance it needs to be uh, kept equivalent to the uh, so called input impedance which is also our characteristic impedance and once we get the characteristic impedance we simply have the job of putting the values of l and c's in that equation to uh, get the final final formulas that we use in our numericals to design uh, 
filters it could be low pass filters of t section low pass filters of pi section and high pass filters of t section and high pass filters of pi section but the theory remains the same you simply need to find out z or t and then proceed on from there uh, not exactly z or t but z naught which is the characteristic impedance and i hope this tutorial was of help if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel uh, share this video as much as you can and i'll see you around in the next one uh, till then take care have a great day ahead and a good life bye